You know, in Cuba, we are ending a policy that was long past its expiration date. When what you're doing doesn't work for 50 years, it's time to try something new. The highest ranking U.S. delegation to visit Havana in 35 years sat down with Cuban officials this week. At stake, the restoration of ties broken off more than half a century ago. Hello, I'm Arnold Naidu in Washington, D.C., and this is The Heat. It was the first meeting since U.S. President Barack Obama and Cuban leader Raul Castro made that surprising announcement to normalize relations between their two countries. Roberta Jacobson, the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for the Western Hemisphere, said the talks had been, quote, positive and productive, with the two sides discussing issues that need to be resolved before embassies can be opened. The Americans say the resumption of full diplomatic relations depends on how quickly its requests are met while Cuba is demanding that it be removed from a U.S. list of state sponsors of terrorism. Later, we'll talk with a member of Congress with a long history of opposing the U.S. embargo against Cuba. But first, more on the historic meeting between the United States and Cuba from CCTV's Michael Voss. He joins us from Havana. Michael, what came out of these meetings? Well, I think what these meetings show is that after 50 years of confrontation, uh, there are a lot of issues still to be resolved as the head of the U.S. delegation, the Secret Assistant Secretary of State Roberta Jacobson said, We've o we have to overcome more than 50 years of a relationship where there hasn't been any confidence or trust. But at the same time, I think both sides have been talking about this being a constructive and a productive meeting um, and one that and they're positive that it's going to go forward. Uh, no date's been set yet for the next meeting about opening the embassies and, and restoring diplomatic relations, but we do expect it to be within a matter of weeks rather than months. Both sides are saying, though, and these are the words they're using, they're saying that there are profound differences that remain. What are the issues that most divide them? And I think you have to divide this into issues that, that divide them and need to be resolved before embassies can be opened and then the other bigger issues. Before embassies can be opened, the U.S. is saying they want freedom of travel for their diplomats around Cuba, uh, unhindered supplies for their, what would be the embassy, and that Cubans should have free access to the embassy. On the Cuban side, they're, they're worried about the fact that what they're saying is how can they open an embassy while they're still on the list of state sponsors of terrorism, which means they can't even have a bank account in the United States. Um, but these are issues which I think both sides are hoping they can resolve fairly quickly. There is a review underway, for example, in the United States now about state sponsors of terrorism, uh, and, a, and a, an announcement is expected at some time in the next few months. But then you come to the bigger issues, like, for example, the U.S. trade embargo, which continues. That takes an act of Congress to lift. The, uh, the travel ban on U.S. tourists, that takes a a travel ban to lift. Um, then from the U.S., from the Cuban side, they're worried about things such as um, wet foot, dry foot, which is any Cuban who sets foot illegally in the United States can get fast-tracked into permanent residency. The Cubans say this encourages illegal migration, help, encourages a brain drain, encourages people to risk their lives in, in makeshift boats, and, and encourages people smugglers. For the moment, the U.S. is saying uh, there's no change on this one. Then there's the, from the U.S. point of view, there's the question of reparations. What's going to happen to all those people who had their businesses and, and, and other property nationalized without compensation half a century ago? There's also the issue of fugitives from justice, a lot of black power, for example, uh, fugitives still in from the 1960s and 70s and 80s still in Cuba. But these are the sorts of issues that I think both sides agree need to be resolved once there are diplomatic relations, after they have re-established an embassy. No one's expecting these to be resolved as a precondition uh, for opening the embassies. And Michael, how are ordinary Cubans seeing all these developments? Oh, I mean, the, the mood here is electric in many ways. On December the, December the 17th, when both 
President Barack Obama and Raul Castro who gave their simultaneous addresses to the nation. Um, you, people stood up and cheered when they heard the news. There were tears. People were hugging each other. I mean, there is great expectation that people's lives would improve. As one Cuban told me, um, at last we can become a normal country and have normal lives. Here, for the last 50 years, there's been a feeling that, 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 that in Cuba that they're under a state of siege from their giant neighbor from the north. If that is lifted, if eventually there can be free trade, they, they get back to business, they can envisage their lives improving because really life is still very tough here. Wages are very low. Expectations are perhaps overly high that there will be instant benefits from that. Some, some of the older generation are still a little cautious. One man said to me, you got, you, they may get, U.S. may give with one hand, but you've got to watch the other. He quoted Che Guevara as saying, you can't give an inch to the Americans and the imperialists because they're really wolves in sheep's clothing. But that's very much of a minority view here. Really, the Cubans on the streets are really looking forward to having normal relations with the United States. Culturally, they're very close. These islands have been close for, the, the two countries have been close for centuries now. A lot of cultural exchanges. Um, I mean, they just want to get back to normal. Thanks, Michael. CCTV's Michael Voster reporting from Havana.